We'll start off by defining virtualization. I'll go more in depth into server virtualization. I'll talk about what a hypervisor is and how it can help you. Then we'll cover type 1 versus type 2 hypervisors. Once you're a virtualization administrator, I'll show you what it would look like for you to administer a virtual infrastructure, and then I'll cover some other types of virtualization that you should be aware of. So with that, let's get started. Before you start learning about anything, you should first have a definition of what it is. So let's start off by defining virtualization. And the textbook definition is that virtualization is an abstraction layer. But that doesn't mean a lot to me and to many other people as well. So what that really means is that the operating system no longer has to be bound to the server or the PC that it runs on. The OS is abstracted from the hardware. In other words, the operating system isn't installed directly on the hardware, and it's not connected directly to that piece of hardware, that PC, that laptop, that server. The operating system isn't installed directly on that. Instead, there's this layer in between the physical server and the operating system that you would normally install called the virtualization layer. If you're using VMware's solution for virtualization, that would be VMware ESXi or ESX. So as you see in the graphic here, you've got the physical server on the bottom, you've got the virtualization layer above that, then you have these containers, these little blocks called virtual machines. Those virtual machines are where you actually install the operating system that you're used to installing on the physical server, and then inside that operating system, of course, you would install your applications. So look at all the virtual machines that are running on that one physical server. Think about all the different operating systems that are inside those virtual machines and how all those different now virtual computers are able to use the same physical computer. And this type of virtualization is called server virtualization. And that's the most well-known form of virtualization. And that's mostly what we'll cover in this video training course on virtualization is server virtualization because it's by far the most popular and it's the type of virtualization that you should start learning about first. So it's server virtualization that makes it possible for the operating system of a physical server to run on the virtualization layer. And that virtualization layer or virtual layer, by the way, is called the hypervisor. Now that allows you to run multiple virtual machines or VMs as we'll call them, each with their own operating system on that same physical server. So you've got the virtual host, which is the physical server with the virtualization layer on it. So that virtualization layer is the hypervisor. And there's different brands of hypervisors out there, some from Microsoft, some from VMware, some from Citrix. Those are all virtualization solutions or server virtualization solutions that you would install on the physical server or the virtual host. Then on top of the virtual host, you've got multiple virtual machines. So you saw those little blocks over there on the physical server. Those are the virtual machines and each guest operating system is running inside the individual virtual machines. Now let me give you a little bit more definition of what a hypervisor is. The hypervisor creates that virtualization layer and it makes server virtualization possible. It contains what they call the Virtual Machine Manager or the VMM. So the VMM's job is really to manage those multiple virtual machines that are running on the single virtual host. So again, multiple virtual machines on just one physical server or one virtual host. So examples of hypervisors would be VMware ESX or ESXi, which are part of VMware's vSphere. There's Microsoft Hyper-V. There's VMware Workstation. There's VMware Fusion, which runs on the Mac operating system. There's Virtual Server and Zen Server. And I'll be going into these in more detail in this training course. I mentioned briefly that one of those hypervisors runs on the Mac operating system. Well, that sounds kind of strange because I just got done telling you that the hypervisor is loaded directly on the hardware. And the confusion lies in that there are two different types of hypervisors there is what you call a type 1 hypervisor which is loaded directly on the hardware that's the picture you saw back here right there where you've got VMware ESXi or ESX loaded directly on the physical server that's a type 1 hypervisor a type 2 hypervisor on the other hand would be loaded on let's say your desktop or your laptop computer just like any other application so examples of type 1 hypervisors are Hyper-V ESX and ESXi or Zen Server. 
Examples of Type 2 hypervisors are VMware Workstation, Microsoft Virtual Server, and VMware Fusion. So the top three, Hyper-V, ESX, and Zen Server, are all loaded directly on a physical server, just like you load your Windows operating system. The bottom three, the Type 2 hypervisors, are loaded inside an operating system that's already running on the hardware. So maybe you have a server that already has Windows Server 2008 in it. You could load Workstation on top of that and then run virtual machines. Same thing with Virtual Server. Uh, VMware Fusion, on the other hand, would be loaded on a Macintosh system like a MacBook Pro or a Mac Mini, let's say a desktop computer, uh, and then you would load Fusion in the Mac operating system. And at this point, you might be saying, well, the Type 2 hypervisors sound much easier to use. I just load an application in my local operating system, and I can run all these virtual machines on top of it. Maybe I could run all the servers in my data center off of my laptop. Well, it doesn't work quite like that. Um, the bottom three, the Type 2 hypervisors, don't perform as well as the Type 1 hypervisors. And that's because that operating system layer is in between the virtualization layer and the physical hardware. So there's greater overhead in using Type 2 hypervisors, which really means you can't get as many virtual machines on the same piece of hardware. And another way of saying that is that the consolidation ratio with Type 2 hypervisors is much lower than the consolidation ratio with Type 1 hypervisors. So in other words, you can't get as many virtual machines on the same piece of hardware if you use a Type 2 hypervisor as you can with a Type 1 hypervisor. So Type 1 hypervisors like Hyper-V, ESX, ESXi, and Zen Server are to be used in the data center. That's where you have a dedicated physical server. You load these virtualization products or these hypervisors on that server, and then you consolidate as many physical servers as virtual machines onto those virtual hosts using the Type 1 hypervisor. That's because you're going to get the best performance with those Type 1 hypervisors. On the other hand, Type 2 hypervisors are still very useful because if you just want to run a couple virtual machines, let's say on your laptop or your desktop PC, the Type 2 hypervisor is the way to go. You could run an Exchange virtual machine or a web server or a Linux virtual machine inside Windows using these Type 2 hypervisors. So there's tremendous benefits in the Type 2 hypervisor, but it's meant for a desktop or a laptop system that already has an operating system. You already have uh, applications, maybe your email, your web browsing, uh, your Microsoft Office applications. They can all be loaded on there along with the Type 2 hypervisor that's going to give you access to run more virtual machines. And again, I'll be demonstrating many of these hypervisors in this video training course. Moving on, let's now talk about how you administer enterprise virtualization. So this is a graphic, thanks to VMware.com, that lays out the typical VMware virtual infrastructure. On the bottom down here, you have what they call private cloud resource pools. So private cloud resource pools, just think of these as the servers in your data center. VMware is calling that now the private cloud. So if you have servers in your data center, that's the private cloud once you load virtualization on top of them. So the private cloud resources are the CPU, the disk, and the network resources that are available on your physical servers in the data center. On the right-hand side on the bottom here, you have the public cloud. We'll be talking more about cloud computing in a later lesson. So loaded on top of the private cloud resources, you have VMware vSphere. Assuming you choose that option from VMware, it's a type 1 hypervisor. And VMware vSphere has different types of services, or, or you can just think of them as features included in vSphere. So there's infrastructure services, which is really ESX and ESXi. The features they provide, like the distributed resource scheduler, memory over commitment, uh, there's application services, things like vMotion, high availability, data recovery, security, and scalability features. All these are just features inside VMware vSphere. You don't have to worry about those right now since you're just getting started with virtualization. vSphere has all these different features. On top of it, there's a management layer. That's the VMware vCenter server. Basically, it's just a Windows application that you go to to manage multiple ESX servers or multiple physical servers running VMware's virtualization software. And then on top of those servers, you're running your virtual machines and your applications inside the guest operating systems. 
So if this graphic seems a little confusing, let me now go over to an actual uh, vSphere client that I've connected to a vCenter server, and you can see the virtual machines and the ESX and ESXi servers in the virtual infrastructure. Here I am inside the VMware vSphere client. This is the application that a VMware administrator would use to administer a VMware virtual infrastructure. On the left hand side I have my ESX servers. These are the physical servers and then underneath that I have all my virtual machines. Thus I'm able to run all the virtual machines you see on this list inside just three ESX servers or three physical servers with a lot of room for growth. On the other hand, if you are using Microsoft Hyper-V, this is the application called Hyper-V Manager that you would use to administer a Hyper-V server. Inside this one physical Hyper-V server today, I just have one virtual machine, but I have plenty of room for growth. Just like the vSphere client, with this application, you can create new virtual machines, you can turn off your virtual machines, reboot them, take snapshots, which I'll talk about a little bit later, and even clone or duplicate existing virtual machines. Of course, I can also access the console of the virtual machine from this application, just like I would access the physical server console if I wasn't using virtualization. So that's how you administer enterprise virtualization. It's real simple. There's a client application that you use. You connect that client application either to a centralized management server or to the individual physical server that's running the virtualization software. From there, you can create and administer all your virtual machines running on that host or across the entire virtual infrastructure. Now, I mentioned earlier that there's other types of virtualization besides just server virtualization. There's desktop virtualization, network virtualization, I.O. virtualization, storage, and even application virtualization. With desktop virtualization, you're virtualizing end-user desktops in the virtual infrastructure or in the data center, just like you virtualize your physical servers using server virtualization. So the end users would then use thin client devices to access their virtual desktops that are now in the data center. With network virtualization, you're virtualizing the network. Now basics of network virtualization are required for server virtualization, because if you think about it, you've got all these virtual machines running on a single physical server those virtual machines have to communicate with one another and then they have to communicate to the physical network and network virtualization is used to do that but there are more advanced types of network virtualization even where you have Cisco switches running virtually in the virtual infrastructure with IO virtualization you virtualize storage and network protocols onto a single communication path so in your data center instead of having let's say four network cables and two fiber channel SAN cables that go to every server, you can consolidate that all onto a single cable or two cables if you need redundancy. Then you'd be able to dynamically add and remove virtual connections to that single physical server using I.O. virtualization. With storage virtualization, you virtualize the storage servers so that they're decoupled from the storage hardware. So instead of having a physical storage device like a storage area network or a network attached storage or NAS device, that would be virtualized as a virtual machine and then you would access that storage over the network. These are called virtual storage appliances or VSAs. And then finally there's application virtualization which is virtualizing applications so that they're decoupled from the operating system. So instead of having to install let's say Microsoft Office, this large application that's installed into the operating system and modifies the registry what if you could run those individual Microsoft Office applications just as single executables, just a single Word.exe. You double click that and it runs Word without any installation. You could run it over the network, you could run it over a thumb drive. All these things are possible with application virtualization. In summary, when it comes to these other types of virtualization, I want you to know what's out there. I want you to know that all these exist. But I encourage you to first learn about server virtualization because, honestly, that's the best place to start. And that's where you're going to get the most bang for your buck because it will help you as an IT administrator and also help your company to save money and get things done so much faster.